Hello everybody, my name is Hocus and welcome back to the channel for episode 1 of the Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons modded Minecraft playthrough. If you were here for episode 1, that's right, I said if you were here for episode 1, there already has been an episode 1, well, things went a little bit pear-shaped whilst recording episode 2. I ran into a major issue which essentially meant that it would have just been easier for me to start again than to try to recover it. And it was sort of my fault, but uh, also something a little bit unexpected. So here we are, back in episode one for a restart and hopefully a successful run through this exciting mod pack. You'll absolutely want to stay tuned today so that I can hopefully recover my progress. I'm aiming to get back into a position that is similar to the one that we got to by the end of episode one and hopefully a little bit further because, well, dodging all over the place. Whoa, 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 calm down, break the tree. Because starting again, for all of those of you guys that have seen episode one, obviously probably don't want to see a similar type episode released again. So I'll try my best to skip over all of the stuff that I've already done and make my way quickly back to the point at which we left off. Anyhow, for those of you that weren't with me for episode one, this is going to be a very, very chilled and relaxed playthrough. It's essentially going to be a series where I load up the game, play for a few hours and cut that footage down into episodes. This way, it'll be a little bit easier for me to put out this content. So this mod pack kicks you off with a free house. It's called a starting house and it is from the prefab mod. If you right click the blueprint, you get to make a selection. Now, last time I chose the basic house and I didn't show you guys all of the options. So you've got all of the options that are showing on screen. And I think this time we'll go with something a little bit different. Perhaps we'll go with the, I think the ranch style looks pretty cool. And again, I'm just gonna go black bed and black glass. Hit that build button and there she is in all of her glory, Hoke Pokes house. Thank you very much. In this chest here, we have all of our starter gear. So I'm going to go ahead and happily take that and also probably just chuck a few things away that we're not going to be using for now. Quest book might be useful because there are a few starter quests that we'll take for free. So visit the overworld. Can't miss that one. And then there is one about starting equipment. So ready to roll. This time, maybe we'll go with something different. Let's do the ranger equipment and gadget selection. Iron divining rod, I'm not sure what that is. Torch launcher, I don't know, maybe the wooden hook again. I feel like that's the most useful of the three. And then again, from the level up reloaded mod, we have the skill book and you've got to choose your starting class. Last time I went warrior, I'm tempted to do the same thing again. Although I did choose a ranger pack, didn't I? But it doesn't seem like there's anything that would fit that. So we'll just take warrior again. I'm sure that it will be beneficial to us. And let's check out what the crate of ranger equipment holds. Just a bow, no armor. A bow with infinity, but not an arrow. Seriously? I mean, that's not a bad bow, is it? But not even an arrow to get me started. That seems quite cheap. Anyway, we'll have to get over that fast. Let's plant some crops in the garden here. So that's our carrots, potatoes. We've got an aubergine seed. That's pretty cool. Some regular seeds and anything else I can plant here at the moment. Silkworm egg, quick silver drop. Nope, doesn't look like it. Let's armor up. Just a quick couple things to clarify before we go any further. The first one is that the first episode, the original episode one of this series, I'm going to make it private because this one supersedes it. But I will link it down in the description below if you did want to go back and watch it for more detail on what we do today. And that kind of leads into my second point, which is we won't fully skip over all of the stuff we've already done, but I will go a little bit more quickly than I did in the original episode one. Anyway, on the original episode one, a commenter named Domantus, he left, or she, he or she left a comment giving me a few pointers about the mod pack and actually suggested I was doing quite well. So thank you for that, Domantus. And they said that you are able to travel down ladders quickly in this mod pack using shift right click. So if I shift, right click, it takes me to the bottom. And if I shift, right click, it'll take me back near the top, close enough. So that's pretty cool. They also gave me a few other tips, which I'll be following, hopefully, either in this episode or the episodes to come. But I figured that the best thing to do would be to head down into the branch mine, where there is a free chest of starter items. I've grabbed the iron that I was gifted, 
and I've used it to create a pickaxe because what we're going to do is go down into our branch mine, which comes as a part of the house, and we are going to just begin branch mining. I think that would be a good place to start so that we can begin getting some resources up together. Hang on. Who's this? I've just broken into a cave in the branch mine and it's really early days here. I haven't done much at all. Oh, wait, 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 wait. They're bad guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dodge. Cover. Oh, one down and two down. Oh, okay. I didn't realize they had these strange little underground houses. Loot, not that great at all, but I will take the food. I'll be thankful for that, no doubt. Okay, nice. So you can see progressing pretty quick. It's nice and simple to branch mine in this mod. There's a lot to be found. And I just came across my first diamonds, half of them spent on a pickaxe, which has got the worthless quality, which isn't great. Anyhow, we're going to spend one more on something else. And I did craft this in the original episode one, but I've got to show it again because this thing is simply magnificent. So we're going to take two blocks of quartz, two obsidian, one diamond, a very cheap recipe to create the mattock. Now, if you read the tooltip, it says three by three mining, equal parts shovel and pickaxe. And let me tell you guys, if you didn't see it last time out, you want to see it now. This thing is not only super satisfying, but an absolute monster. Okay, there wasn't really much room to test it in, so let's go back this way instead. But look at it, it just tears... Oh no, no, no! <laughs> Whew, just about managed to survive that ordeal. And I probably should have planned out the demonstration a little bit better, because that was almost embarrassing. So let's try that again, this time with the lava covered over. And look at it go! It's incredible. It's super fast, but there is one big issue with it. And that is that when you dig with it, it fills up your inventory pretty darn quick. And this was something that I was in the process of working on in the episode two that ended up taking us back to episode one. If you're following my drift this episode. And it's an inventory issue, right? So inventory fills up fast, and what we want to do is try to solve that. So I'm probably going to look into that again today. There are backpacks, there are bags, and they all pretty much do a stellar job of increasing the amount of items that you can hold. There's probably far more mining to be done, but we are looking a lot healthier on the resource front. So here's what I've picked up so far, and of course there is more to be smelted. After killing those illagers earlier, I got this lumberjack bag. I think this is like a loot bag, so let's open it up and two pieces of spruce wood that is great so on top of everything that we've looked at so far the quest book offers tasks that will reward you upon completion so you get coins experience which is nice and those coins can be spent in this in book shop so i'm probably going to be mostly going for these loot crates and that means it's probably a good idea to just start building up our coins because right now we've got 25 and for the best ones, you need 1,000. You do also occasionally get these lock boxes as rewards. And once again, that's just a mini loot bag. So from this one, we got a clock, which is again, useful, quotation marks, question mark. And then with the experience that we are amassing, we can go back to the level up reloaded mod. And there are a bunch of perks that we can level up here. So the class that I chose at the start gave us a basic amount of points allocated in certain areas that were associated with what we picked. But we can increase our melee damage and the chance to do random crits, our archery, bowstring, drawback, make it quicker. So every five Minecraft levels is a skill point and skill points will be spent on these perks, like I say. Who are these blokes? Crimson Knight, uh oh, they look tough. Oh, that's a miss. Oh, they're not, they're not too bad. I have now found an arrow, though, obviously, which means we can use the bow. And this should just about do it. What was that explosion? I have no idea. Ooh, armor. What's this? Crimson Colt chestplate, plus six. We've got plus three. Give me that. And it looks, oh, yes. That looks mega cool as well. Who are you? I think I need to get that guy. He oh, whoa, whoa. That's where the explosion came from. 
This could be bad. Oh no, I'm on fire. Okay, that's another knight down, but his friend is right on me. And the dude with the spells is a pain in the butt. Let's do some melee on this guy. See if we can take him. Not too tough, not too tough. Now, where is that shooty fireball guy? Did he vanish? Maybe he vanished. I have no idea, but I'm sure I would know about it if he was in our vicinity. Anyway, that's pretty cool. I'm going to combine both of these. And like I said, that looks pretty sweet. Just popped out to kill some of the local cows, got some leather, and we should be good to go now crafting a backpack. So let's see what it's going to take. First of all, we need this tanned leather, which is bound leather smelted, which is a combination of leather and string. We'll need four of those. So one, two, three, four, and I'll take that back, pop them in the furnace and let it go. Now we need a chest. I've already got one of those, which is perfect. So it should be chest, string, 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 and then four of the tanned leather. That gives us the backpack, which gives us another 18 inventory slots. So not massive amounts, but it's it's a step in the right direction. And we can also pop it on our back and it looks super, super slick. I've just turned in a bunch of quests and got some rewards. So let's crack open the lockbox. Oh, gold ingot. That's fairly useful. We've got this slightly larger chest, which is the same size, but just blocky and not that useful. I have a couple more to turn in. So coins, XP and charcoal. And then for the backpack, we've got coins. Oh, tanned leather. That's good. And ink sacks. So... There is a way to upgrade these backpacks, and I'm thinking we go straight for the diamond. So we're going to need two sticks, two tan leather, and some planks. And if we do something a little bit like that, we'll get a blank upgrade. Then if we take our three diamonds, we can combine those in the crafting bench like so, I believe. Then one of these guys. That gives us this, which we should be able to use on this guy somehow oh okay perhaps we actually have to start at wood and work our way up so let's see about that instead maybe a wood upgrade is made in this fashion so three pieces of wood and then if we combine the two okay that is our first upgrade and then i'm assuming it's just a tier based thing yep so the diamond's gonna have to wait that was a little bit premature but there we go another nine slots on the backpack which just about doubles this inventory area here Oh, baby. So I've opted for the iron. Is it great sword? Long sword? Iron great sword. The iron warhammer. And then finally, the iron boomerang. So I think these could be pretty fun to test out. And like I say, I was just on the verge of. Oh, wow. That looks. This looks seriously fun. I was just on the verge of heading out to do some exploration. So we're pretty much set for that if I just grab a little bit more food, maybe. And I know that if we head west, there's a desert. And in that desert, I did see a couple things that looked pretty intriguing. Oh, it's actually submerged. So maybe not. I don't know. Let's, uh, uh-oh, uh-oh, we got company. <laughs> the boomerang. Is it doing anything to this guy? Oh, it is. Let's get the, the great sword out. I was, oh no. I was pretty interested to see what this will do. Um, is that good? Oh, that was good. Oh, that is good. Oh, Great sword. Oh, great sword OP. That made me jump. Lag. Get him down. Oh, we've got company again. Need to shut the portal down. Is there a way to do that? No. They actually hit pretty hard. Oh, snap. They're still here. The portal is still there, so we have got to be quick. And here they come. Here they come. So, I think it's just a right click. It is. Sweet. Everything back. Nice. Armor is equipped. We are good to go. Come here. Oh, no, no, no. Don't come here. Don't come here. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Boomerang. 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 The boomerang's quite weak. And that is not really that much of a surprise, I guess. I was hoping for more, though. All right, we've narrowed it down to this guy. So let's get the warhammer out. See what this can do. Ow. Stop burning me, please. Oh, that was a good hit. No, he's got to go down. No, don't lag, please. Yes. Oh, that was a close fight. Did he? It's like he took my food away from me, or did I eat it all? <laughs> Maybe I ate it all. Okay, portal down. 
and we are free to get ourselves back in a position to fight. And I do still want to go in here, despite it being submerged. It might actually not be submerged on the inside. Creeper, creeper, creeper. Uh oh, creeper. Hey there, Mr. Creeper. Oh, this this great sword is a good reach on it. That's nice. And it's very tough as well. Good weapon choice, I must say. Let's get this back where I need it. Okay. That'll do. Ghost. Hello, ghost. Do you... Are you friends? Nope. They are... Oh, get down. Oh, two suspicious levers. I'm getting a lot of lag here. This is uh, alarming. What did that one do? I'm scared now. Oh. Oh. Hello. What is that? Hello. <laughs> oh. That is Medusa. I don't think. I'll get involved with you right now, Medusa. We'll just seal her back up. Zombie, what do you got? Or goon, he hasn't got a lot. Spider, also does not have a lot. Zombie, one, two hits. This thing's tough, I love it. This longsword is great. Whoa, whoa, you're fast, you're fast. Leave me alone. Whew. Okay, back at base, we are safe. So, let's take a look at the spoils of our small adventure. And what we've got is a mixture of a bunch of things that I really don't know what they do. But I'm assuming that a lot of this rough tweak stuff is healing items, which is cool. And then we've got a bunch of other materials. We've got some of the Crimson Colt boots, but they're very damaged, so I probably won't wear them. I have a bunch of these loot bags as well, which will crack open in just a second. But I've added a hotkey from my backpack, so we can open that with it on our back. That is another loot bag right there. And there are some more things hanging around, some armor, shields, experience, more healing stuff, these spell books. Don't know what they do, but I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. But as I've previously mentioned, let's get these loot bags open. So the first one, ore, ender amethyst. Okay, interesting. Lumberjack again, mangrove. Then we've got book bag, book bag. Ooh, feather falling four, nice. And whatever this is. Then we've got tool bag, a compass and a stone axe, and magic bag, scroll of stole, stole? Soul steel. Scroll of soul steel. Can I cast it? No, I cannot. So, more things I need to learn. Alright guys, welcome back. A lot of new stuff is going on. I say welcome back like there's been some sort of interlude. Obviously there hasn't to you, but there has to me. I sat down and watched the Chelsea Liverpool game for anybody that's into football. Great game, by the way. Um, if you watched it yourselves, let me know down below. I'd love to discuss it. But if not, that's totally okay as well. Anyway, that's besides the point. We have done a few things. I've completed a few quests. This is one of the freebies, and it gives you a... I can't remember what they call these, like a waystone or something. And essentially what this allows you to do is teleport to other waystones in the world. So you can find them in villages and pretty much just have a network of overall teleports. Pretty handy. Coming inside the base, we've got this humongous chest outside, which is again one of those colossal chests that I used first time round. I've set up a simple storage interface with it, so we've got all of our stuff sitting inside of this one block, which is cool. Allows us to access our items and craft with them on the spot. Something I'd like to look into is bonsai pots from the bonsai trees mod, and those are very very interesting because they allow you to generate resources in a very sustainable and fast way so they require bricks to craft and fortunately for you guys i've been working on that off camera so we've got some bricks and i'm gonna make a few of these we'll just go ahead and make eight which gives us 12 for some reason i i'm not really sure why maybe that actually used all of my bricks yeah it did that's okay that is okay and i think if you combine these with a hopper you get the hopping bonsai pot which when atop an inventory it will deposit everything into the inventory let's go ahead and do six of these hopping bonsai pots for now i think that will be enough to get started and then we are also going to need sapling so i'm going to try a silverwood sapling i'm going to try a spruce let's take a jungle and let's also grab an oak because i'm not sure if this is going to work but what i want to do is try to put these on top of the colossal chest if you guys have never seen this mod before essentially what you can do is grow mini trees in these bonsai pots so i'm going to try the silverwood sapling 
and you can now see the whaler in the top left is showing the progress of that mini tree that's growing. So we're growing a mini silverwood bonsai, and as soon as that hits 100%, it's currently at 10, it should deposit a good amount of wood, sticks, leaves, that sort of thing, anything the tree might grow into the chest beneath it, but I've never tested this mod with the Colossal Chest mod before, so hopefully it works. And just in case it does, let's go ahead and set up a couple more. So we've got spruce there, and then we've got one jungle sapling, and then we'll go also with an oak here at the front. There we go. Got four trees growing at the moment, and we'll just keep an eye on wood levels in our storage system. Hopefully they start ticking up. Hmm, so that wasn't quite working, and I'm a little bit concerned that perhaps it's because we're not using a Colossal Chest interface beneath the bonsai pots, but I don't want to test that just in case something goes wrong. So instead, what we'll do is we'll move this torch up by one block, and we'll just set up a small, janky little tree farm inside of our house for now. And this should, again, do the trick. So we're going to have four different sapling types, silverwood, spruce, oak and jungle and this time I'm, I'm pretty certain this should work i'm pretty certain spruce is very close so let's get the chest open and we got a stick really <laughs> okay over here we got some apples we got oak wood and a stick but just a stick why is everything being so cheap today but do you guys know what the super cool thing is about bonsais and their capabilities the cool thing about it is that if we were to take some saplings from our inventory here, and I've already pulled this up on the right hand side, you can just see how many saplings are available to us. But through Pam's Harvest Craft, we can actually create some pretty cool food oriented saplings. So we could have a dragon fruit tree, for example. We could also have a banana tree, which is again, really cool. We could have a peach or Grapefruit, I should say. There is apricot and grapefruit. I thought this was a peach. We can have a grapefruit tree, or there is an alternate to these as well. If we pull up paper, we can make a paper bark tree, which will give us paper. So there are so many options, and essentially what these bonsai pots do is just cut out the need to ever harvest wood. So if we just leave these going, it's just going to build up, build up, build up, and eventually we'll have loads and loads of resources. And I think what we'll do is we'll take a couple more chests over in the corner here. And again, this is really messy, but uh, I'm not going to focus too much on how things look in this playthrough. I'm just going to have fun. We will do a little bit of building here and there, and I will tidy this up eventually. But for now, it'll do just because it's nice to get all of these things just set up and working. And then we can think about form at a later date. But look at these guys. Look at them go. So we're going to get some grapefruit, bananas, we're going to get dragon fruit, and we should also get some paper as well, which is pretty cool, because paper is pretty useful in this mod pack. I've got a use for it coming up anyway. All right then, everybody, that is going to be all for episode one of the rad Minecraft modded playthrough. I do hope you had fun with this one today. I had a blast once again recreating the first episode of this series. So hopefully from here on out, no issues, and we can continue in this fashion, because like I say, it was a lot of fun. So if you did enjoy today's video, please be sure to drop a like down below. That would be much appreciated. Any questions, suggestions, comments, or feedback, or any tips at all on this mod pack, I would be very grateful of those. And finally, if you're new here, then first of all, welcome, welcome. My name is Hocus. I hope you enjoyed your stay on my channel today. If you did, please consider hitting that red subscribe button down below and the bell notification to stay tuned to this series and all of the other awesome Minecraft content to come. So that wraps things up for us, guys. Take care, and until next time, bye for now.